Today, I'm talking about The White Tiger. The book was written by Aravinda Diga in 2008 and adapted by Netflix in 2021. It's about an Indian man from a lower caste who manages to work his way up and break out of his social class and become a successful entrepreneur. Hey there, I'm Jessica, and this is Bookshelf to Big Screen. If you're new to the channel, I take a look at books that have been adapted to the big or small screen and compare the differences between the two. So if you're the kind of person who loves to know what changes were made in the movie or if the book really was better, be sure to subscribe. Real quick, if you want to avoid any spoilers, watch for this. I'll have it up during any revealing parts and in the event you want to wait and read or watch for yourself, you can just skip forward until it's gone. The movie starts with what looks like a wild night of partying in the past, but pauses with our protagonist Balram saying that the story should start with a prayer. We see him watching a news report that the Chinese Prime Minister will be visiting India to meet with leading entrepreneurs. Balram decides to email him to tell him about what it really means to be an entrepreneur in India. He briefly talks about the village that he's from, and then he says that the best way to give basic facts about him is to read off a wanted poster the police created of him for an act of entrepreneurship. He says he'll say why he was wanted by the police later. The book is told entirely through Balram's perspective while writing this letter to the Prime Minister. Each chapter is essentially a different night that he sits down to continue writing the letter of the story of his life. He does talk about starting the story with a prayer, but the timeline in the book is a little different than the movie. In the book, he does start off with a story about Ashok and Pinky, the people who we see at the beginning of the movie, but it's not the same story. The story does appear in the movie, but it happens much later when Balram first meets Pinky. I'll point it out when we get there. When he talks about the wanted poster, he breaks it down line by line, and this is how he begins to give a little history of his childhood and the village that he's from. Also, at the end of the first chapter, he very clearly states the crime he was wanted for, which isn't given away until nearly the end of the movie. In the movie, Balram talks about being from the darkness. He says his granny made his older brother work in the tea shop and took every rupee his father made. Balram is in school when a man is there testing the children and yelling at the teacher because they can't read what's written on the board. Balram stands up and reads it perfectly, and the man asks him about the great socialist. He tells Balram that he is like a white tiger, so rare they only come along once in a generation, and he promises to get Balram a scholarship so that he can go to school in Delhi. In the book, he really gives a lot of detail about what the school was like. His teacher was regularly drunk and ate pan, which is a stimulant similar to chewing tobacco, and he would just spit it out on the walls. The school would receive money for free lunches for the kids, but the teacher would just steal that money because he wasn't being paid very much. He also sold their school uniforms and kept that money for himself as well. The book explains that this man is the school inspector, and there's two differences with this part of the book. First, the teacher tells the inspector to call on Balram, saying that he's the smartest. Second, the great socialist is a man in the book. In the movie, we're introduced to the stork, the landlord of the village, and his son, the mongoose. Balram's brother takes him out of school to go to work in the tea shop, saying that he has to work now because their dad didn't make enough money to pay the landlord. By the end of that year, his dad has tuberculosis. They have to travel two days to another village to see a doctor, but no one ever came. At his father's funeral, Balram sees that his father's feet curl in the fire and he faints. He says that this is when he understood how hard it is for a man to win his freedom. In the book, there are four landlords. Their names are based on which industry they take a cut of. The stork owns the river and takes a cut from the fishermen. The wild boar owns the farmlands and takes his cut from the farmers. He also has two teeth sharpened to look like tusks. The raven owns the rocky hillside and takes his cut from the goat herders. Balram says that if the goat herders didn't have money to pay, the raven would dip his beak into their backside. In this story, beak is a colloquialism for penis. So, 
Finally, there's the buffalo who owns the roads, so he takes his cut from the rickshaw drivers. Balram does have to quit school, but it's because his cousin got married and the family had to pay for the wedding, so they took a loan from the stork and he insists that every capable family member is working to pay him back. His dad is actually a big advocate for him to go to school, and later he does get tuberculosis and dies, but while they're at the hospital, another sick man there tells them how the government works. He says that doctors pay money to the government medical authority to say that they have already taken their turns visiting the small villages, so no one ever actually shows up. The government dude takes these bribes because he's paid a huge sum of money to the great socialists in order to secure his position. Finally, the part about watching the toes curl in the fire and fainting was something that happened to Balram, but at his mother's funeral which is described at the very beginning of the book, and the movie doesn't talk about his mother at all. In the movie, Balram is older now, and he's working in the tea shop. He sees the stork's youngest son, Ashok, and decides this is the master for him. He tells his granny that he overheard Ashok needs a driver and asks her for money for driving school. It takes some convincing, but she finally agrees, and he goes to Danbad to learn to drive. In the book, Balram gets fired from the tea shop for eavesdropping on the customers. After this, no one in town will hire him, so he and his brother and cousin go to Danbad to find work in another tea shop. Here, he overhears a conversation about how much drivers can make, and this is what makes him want to be a driver. He has no immediate plans to drive for Ashok yet. He asks his brother to help him become a driver, but initially he refuses. And later, his brother says that Granny gave the okay, and he gives Balram the money for driving lessons. The final difference here is that Balram's driving instructor buys him a prostitute when he's passed his class. In the movie, Balram goes to the stork's house to try to get a job. He flatters his way in and convinces the stork to give him a shot. After a trial and check on his family, he's hired. He explains that a master has to know where a servant's family is at all times to be able to keep them in check. That way they know the risk of committing any crimes against their master. In the book, there's only some minor differences for this part. Balram goes door to door asking if anyone needs a driver. He's not specifically looking for the stork or even knows where his house is. He just happens to look out when he sees the stork and flatters him until he gives him a shot. One other small detail, the amount of money has increased from the book to the movie. In the book, the mongoose offers him a salary of 800 rupees a month, which will go up to 1500 after two months. But in the movie, he's offered 1500 which will go up to 2000 I looked it up, and 1500 rupees today is 20 US dollars. It's not a big detail, but I'm curious about it because I'm not sure if this change is to account for inflation between when the book was published and when the movie was made, or if 800 rupees per month, about $11 now, just sounded too terrible. In the movie, when Balram first meets Pinky, Ashok asks him some questions about computers and the internet, showing Pinky that he's half-baked that he's only had a couple of years of schooling so he can read and write, but he can't comprehend the things that he reads. Pinky tells Ashok that he's being a jerk, but he says that he's not because Balram represents the biggest undertap market and he wants to capitalize on that. Ashok says that Balram is the future of India. In the book, this is actually the story that Balram talks about at the beginning of the book, and it plays out very differently. They're driving in the car and Ashok tells him to pull over. He then asks Balram a series of science and history questions. Pinky does not stick up for him. She laughs at how dumb he is. Ashok is not thinking of how to market new enterprises to people like Balram. He's telling Pinky that the problem with India is that their democracy is entrusted to all these half-baked people. And he's upset about it. I quickly want to talk about this scene because I brought up Balram's salary earlier. Balram is massaging the stork's legs, then goes to wash his hands and sees that the can of air freshener costs nearly three times his monthly salary. In the book, he goes into detail about how he could never wash the stink of feet off of his hands no matter what. 
he was just stuck with it for a few days. They don't really mention it in the movie, and I don't think it's an important detail, but I liked how they kept it in and then used it as an opportunity to subtly highlight this huge discrepancy in their social classes and economic status. In the movie, Balram is excited because the great socialist comes to visit the stork. Balram says, she was from a lower caste who had pulled herself up to become chief minister of their state and that everyone from the lower castes love her because she knew how to stick it to the rich. But he finds out that she's actually there to shake the stork down for more money. She takes bribes from him to help him avoid paying taxes to the state. When the stork says she's asking for too much, she asks for more, spits on his table, and then leaves. In the book, this mostly happens the same, but to really humiliate them, the great socialist makes the mongoose hold a spittoon in his hands and then spits three times into the spittoon. While Ram says this was the positive side of the great socialist, that he humiliated all the masters and that's why they kept voting him back into office. In the movie, the mongoose is telling the stork that they should go to Delhi and pay off the opposing party instead of continuing to pay the great socialist. Ashok agrees and says he wants to be the one to go. Pinky speaks up, saying that the stork should not have been disrespected by the great socialist, but the mongoose tells Ashok to keep his wife in check. This pisses Pinky off and she tells them that she and Ashok are going to go to Delhi and solve their tax problems. In the book, when Ashok chimes in, the stork shushes him and tells him to let him and the mongoose handle it. Pinky is not even with them while they are discussing the matter, so the big confrontation never even happens. The head servant notices Balram eavesdropping and moves him along, so he doesn't even hear the rest of the conversation. In the movie, Balram is unhappy that as second driver, he has to do many other tasks around the house, while the first driver gets to take it easy or play with the children. While Ram notices that he doesn't eat with the rest of the servants and follows him one day. This is when he discovers that the other driver is Muslim. Later, when he finds out he's going to get a raise to be Ashok and Pinky's driver in Delhi, he uses this information to get the driver to quit because the stork does not like Muslims and he can get the job of driving them in Delhi. In the book, Balram doesn't figure out that the first driver is Muslim until after he finds out he's getting a raise to be their driver in Delhi. This is what motivates him to uncover his secret. When he follows him and sees him go into the mosque, he runs back to tell the head servant. The head servant was supposed to run a background check on the driver, which means that he was in on it and getting a cut from the first driver. So Balram actually blackmails the head servant and in addition to getting the driver to quit without ever confronting him directly, he also saves himself from all the menial tasks that he used to have to do because now he's got dirt on the head servant too. In the movie, once they're settled into their new apartment in Delhi, Ashok and the mongoose go to see the prime minister to give him a bribe. When Balram misses an exit, the mongoose says they should have hired a local driver, but Ashok defends Balram. Afterwards, the mongoose asks Ashok if he's told Pinky that he plans to stay in India, but Ashok doesn't answer him. After the mongoose goes back home, Ashok tells Balram to keep it more casual and call him Ashok instead of Master. It seems like they spend a lot of time together. Later, while Ashok and Pinky are at the mall, Balram gets mad at the other drivers for making fun of him. All the servants live in the building's garage and he moves out of his nice room by these servant standards to another room that's full of junk and bugs just to get away from the other servants. In the book, they were in Danbad for quite a while before they went to Delhi. During this time, we get a bit more of Pinky's personality. She's not happy that they've been in India for so long and wants to go back to New York. She's also kind of a dick to Balram. When the mongoose talks about firing Balram, Ashok says that it's the only thing that Pinky and the mongoose agree on, but he says that Balram is from home and that they can trust him. All the stuff with the mall and drivers happens, but it happens on his second day in Delhi. One thing I found interesting is that Balram explains that servants are not allowed inside the malls. 
There's actually guards at the doors to keep them out. It's an important detail because later in the story, Balram hits a turning point and he's actually able to fool the guards with his new appearance and gain access to the mall. In the movie, Pinky wants to visit Ashok's uncle near Balram's village. On the way, Ashok notices Balram paying respect to a sacred tree they pass. He points it out to Pinky and when Balram notices how much they enjoyed it, he shows them how and then starts pointing out a bunch of sacred places. He drops them off at the uncle's house, who happens to be the buffalo, and then heads home. Kishan and Granny are mad that he hasn't sent any money home since he moved to Delhi. Granny tells him that she's arranged a marriage for him, but Balram says he's not ready to get married and leaves in a huff. In the book, Ashok decides he wants to visit his uncle, the wild boar, while they're still staying at the stork's house. Pinky is pissed that they have to go, and she starts badgering Ashok about setting a date to return to New York. They actually go to the stork's mansion outside the village, and then the uncle comes to have lunch with them. Balram insists on being the one to serve them lunch, and then goes to see his family. That goes about the same, but when Granny talks about getting him married, she says that she's found a girl for him, and the moment that she has her menstrual cycle, she can come marry him. What? She's talking about getting him a child bride. Not shocked that they left that out of the movie. In the movie, the drive home is pretty uneventful. Ashok tells Balram that his uncle was harassing them about how Ashok is a vegetarian and how Pinky wears pants and how they don't have any kids yet. Then he tells Balram that he wants to start a business in Bangalore, offering financial services. Balram tries to get him to leave that night, but Ashok says he needs to come up with a business plan first. Balram reflects that if they had left that night, things might be different. In the book, when Balram finally gets back, Ashok and Pinky have been waiting on him. Pinky yells at him, but Ashok defends him, saying that he was spending time with his family. On the drive home, Pinky asks Ashok again when are they going back to New York, and Ashok tells her that he really expected to only be there for two months, but now he believes he has more opportunities in India than in the U.S. He also really likes having servants to take care of him. And then, this is when they notice Balram paying his respects to the sacred places that they pass. In the movie, Pinky is talking with a friend about how she thinks Ashok wants to stay in India. Balram brings them some tea, but Pinky chastises him for scratching himself and then for having a dirty uniform and stinking of pun. She sends him away and after her friend leaves, she sits him down to talk to him. She tells him that she got out and he should try to do things that he wants to. He keeps saying that he just wants to serve them, that they are like his family, and she tells him that's why she hates the caste system, and then says that the mongoose tried to stop Ashok from marrying her because they were not in the same caste. Later, Balram considers all the things that Pinky said to him. He buys toothpaste, dress shoes, and new clothes. It's at this point that Balram warns the Prime Minister that his story gets darker from here. And we see for the first time that he's wanted for murder. In the book, Pinky is alone with Balram when she asks him to make her tea. When she sees him scratching, she yells at him and throws him out. She never tries to give him a pep talk about how he should try to get out and do what he wants. Later, Balram drives Pinky and Ashok to the mall and they both make fun of how he says mall. This is the first time that Ashok also makes fun of him instead of defending him. After they're home for the night, Balram goes out and buys his things, but instead of a button-down shirt, he buys a fitted t-shirt like the ones that Ashok wears. The next day, he drives Pinky to the mall and waits a bit, then changes into his new stuff, and this is when he gets into the mall. He says this was his first taste of the fugitive's life. In the movie, on Pinky's birthday, Ashok has Balram dress as the Maharaja and then takes her out to a club. On the drive home, they're drunk and making out, but Ashok notices that Balram is watching them, so he stops Pinky. She gets mad and brings up the fact that they weren't supposed to be in India for so long. 
At a stoplight, she buys a statue from a street girl and then chastises Balram for trying to shoo the girl away. Then she gets him out of the car, gets into the driver's seat, and drives away. She comes right back, but insists on driving. We're back to the scene from the beginning of the movie, but this time it plays out and Pinky hits somebody who ran into the street. Balram gets out and sees that it was a kid. Ashok tries to call the police, but Balram says that Pinky will get in trouble. Pinky gets out and is freaking out, but Ashok and Balram get her back in the car and they drive away quickly. Balram cleans the car when they get home. He assures Ashok that no one will report it and not to worry. When he finally gets to bed, he goes to sleep happy, knowing that he has done his duty by his master, even in the most difficult of moments. In the book, Pinky and Ashok have a fight before they go out, and it's still tense when they drive there. When Ashok stops Pinky, she immediately says that she wants to drive and then yells at Balram for stopping at a stoplight instead of just going through it. When they hit the child, Ashok asks if it was a dog and Balram says yes, even though he knows it wasn't. Pinky is about to say it was a child, but Balram and Ashok work together and get her into the back seat, and Balram drives away. When Pinky is freaking out in the car, Ashok stuffs tissues in her mouth and then gags her with her own scarf to keep her from screaming. In the movie, the mongoose and the stork have come to Delhi. The mongoose is unusually nice to Balram and even gives him some pan to eat. There's another guy there who gives him a document to read. It's a confession saying that Balram was the one who hit the child and that he was alone when it happened. The mongoose says that they've already told his family and that his granny is so proud of him for doing this and that she even signed the document as a witness. Ashok finally chimes in saying that it isn't right, but when the mongoose asks if he wants to take Pinky to the police station and explain what really happened, Ashok quiets down. Balram signs the document and the mongoose tells him how he's such a good member of the family before sending him away. In the book, the mongoose goes alone. When he first gets there, he tells Balram how he's family and not to go anywhere or tell anyone what happened. An hour later, he calls Balram to come back up to the apartment and the man is there with the paperwork. Ashok is not even in the room. Balram explains that this happens all the time. Jails are full of drivers who took the blame for their middle class employers. Their families actually brag about it how loyal of a servant they are, and the judges just take bribes and ignore any discrepancies in the case. In the movie, Balram starts drinking to cope with his impending doom. Later, he's called back up to the apartment to massage the stork's legs. The stork is mad because they've been calling him for a while. Ashok and Pinky walk in, and Pinky asks if they've told Balram yet. Pinky tells him that they found out that no one reported the hit and run so they don't need him to confess. Balram is so relieved he stops massaging and the stork kicks him for it. Pinky gets pissed and attacks the stork. Ashok pulls her off, but she says she's done. Before he leaves, the mongoose tells Balram that he has his confession and that he will always have it. In the book, it's only one long day that Balram spends waiting for the police to come get him. When he gets called back up, it's the mongoose that's upset, saying that the stork wants to talk to him. The stork is happy to see Balram, and for a second, Balram thinks that the stork is there to save him. But those hopes are quickly crushed when he realizes he just wants a foot massage. The mongoose and Ashok are already in the room playing a video game when Pinky comes in and asks why no one has told Balram yet. Ashok is the one who tells him that his help won't be needed. Balram is so relieved, he spills the bucket of water and the stork smacks him for it. Balram says Pinky's face changes as she watches this and then she runs to her room and slams the door. But again, there's no big confrontation with the stork. In the movie, Pinky wakes Balram up and asks him to drive her. On the drive, she tells him that he's been looking for the key for years, but the door was always open but it seems kind of dreamlike. When they get to the airport, she hands him an envelope and leaves. 
It's full of cash. Later, he's telling Ashok that he drove Pinky to the airport. Ashok gets really mad and grabs him by the collar and Balram throws him off, pushing him to the floor. In anger, Ashok tells him that he wishes they had put him in jail. In the book, the stork and the mongoose stay for a few days, but Pinky does leave as soon as they're gone. The line she says in the car is actually something from a book of poetry that Balram learns about later, which becomes his mantra before he becomes a wanted man. When Ashok confronts him, he grabs him from the door and takes him out to the balcony and starts pushing him up against the rail while yelling at him. Balram kicks Ashok off of him to keep from falling over the railing. Ashok actually just starts crying instead of angrily wishing Balram had gone to jail. In the movie, Ashok starts spiraling and Balram takes care of him. The mongoose comes back to take care of the divorce. With the mongoose back, Ashok is no longer nice to Balram. Balram says the envelope had 9,700 rupees in it, about $133 and wonders why that specific amount. Not quite three months' salary, and why not a full 10000 It's like she started with 10000 and then took some out, which makes him mad, thinking that it should have been so much more because he was going to go to jail for her. So he says that he learned how drivers cheat their masters to start making more money. In the book, Balram says that Ashok was so powerless, he forgave him at once and put all the blame on Pinky. This is why he takes care of Ashok. And they hang out like friends. When the mongoose comes back, this illusion is shattered and Balram goes back to just being the driver. The mongoose also says that if Pinky tries to make a fuss about wanting any of Ashok's money in the divorce, he'll just gently bring up the hit and run. In the movie, Balram overhears the mongoose telling Ashok that they need to get a replacement driver. One day, Ashok forgets something and leaves his red bag with Balram while he runs back up to the apartment. Balram takes this opportunity to look into the bag and sees that it's full of money, at least two or three years salary. Later, Balram sees the ghost of his father telling him that he should steal the bag. He thinks about what would happen to his family if he actually did. In the book, Ashok starts seeing an old girlfriend. She doesn't like Balram and is the one who convinces Ashok to start looking for a replacement. After making a payoff one day to one of the ministers, one of the political sidekicks wants Ashok to go out with him. They drink in the car and the guy picks up a blonde Ukrainian woman for Ashok. They all go into a hotel together, but Ashok comes out later alone and looking ill. After this, Balram kind of becomes obsessed with having a blonde woman. This is when he starts making money on the side and saves until he has enough, combined with what Pinky gave him to pay for a blonde prostitute. But the girl ends up not being a natural blonde, so he flips out, getting himself kicked out and loses all that money. Balram never sees the ghost of his father, but he does weigh the pros and cons of stealing the money. In the movie, Balram stops Ashok one night, wanting to tell him that he'd like to smash his skull and steal his money, but instead Ashok says he knows, he's homesick. He tells Balram to plan a trip home and gives him some money, but it's only enough for a one-way trip. In the book, Ashok thinks that Balram wants to get married. He says that he'll take care of the wedding expenses, and then Balram watches him pull out a 1,000 note, put it back, pull out a 500 note, put it back, and then finally give him a 100 rupee note. In the movie, the election is over and the great socialist won. So now they have to pay her. Ashok offers her 1 million rupees, but they're mad that they were trying to pay the opposition, so they ask for 4 million instead. One night, when Balram gets home, his nephew is there waiting for him with a letter from Granny. Dharam says that Balram is supposed to look after him and help him become a driver. In the letter, Granny scolds Balram for not sending any money home and says that he needs to start sending it again. She also said that if he doesn't come home to get married, she'll send the girl to him on a bus. 
Finally, she threatens to write a letter explaining everything and send it to his masters if he refuses. In the book, when Ashok goes to meet with the politicians, he lets the two of them have the car for the night. And Balram overhears them saying that they're making Ashok pay 700000 Granny sends a letter earlier with the mongoose after Pinky leaves. She says that she won't force him to marry, but Balram knows that this is her way of blackmailing him because Granny will just tell Ashok that he hasn't been sending any money. The second letter that comes with Dharam is the same as the movie. In the movie, when Balram introduces Dharam to Ashok, Ashok gives him the day off. Balram is suspicious because Ashok has never given him the day off, and he waits and sees that Ashok has found his replacement. At the zoo, Balram sees the white tiger and faints for the second time. That night, he takes a broken bottle and a change of clothes and puts them under the driver's seat of the car. He gives Dharam money and hopes that he knows to run when he doesn't come back. In the book, Ashok's girlfriend is still hassling him to get a new driver. After Dharam is there for a while, Balram asks for the day off, and Ashok questions why he would want the day off. Balram says that he wants to take Dharam to the zoo. Balram does wait around and see that Ashok called in another man to interview as his replacement. The bottle Balram ends up using is actually the one that was left behind in the car by the two politicians. After he passes out in the zoo, he dictates a letter for Dharam to write to Granny about what happened. He tells Dharam to write that Balram was raving and said, I can't live the rest of my life in a cage, Granny. I'm so sorry. Then he tells Dharam to post the letter as soon as he leaves the next day. This is essentially a confession to his family. In the movie, Balram takes Ashok out to make his delivery. He stops the car, saying something is wrong with the tire. He gets Ashok to get out to help. And while he's looking at the tire, Balram hits him and then stabs him with the bottle. Balram goes to the train station but decides to go back for Dharam. They take the train to Bangalore, but Balram doesn't leave his room for four weeks while he comes to term with having murdered someone. Finally, Balram makes his last leap to business entrepreneur. He uses most of the money to bribe the police, getting them to arrest drivers for expired licenses. Then he is able to start his driving company. In the end, Balram says he took Ashok's name and now he's worth 15 times what he borrowed from Ashok. He says he is different. If his drivers make mistakes, he takes the responsibility. He does not tell them they are family. They are employees and they all sign a contract that he also signs. Balram actually meets the Chinese prime minister and briefly talks to him about real estate. In the book, on the third day of traveling by train, Ashok goes to buy some tea and sees his wanted poster for the first time. Another guy sees him looking at it and for a minute he thinks it's over, but the guy doesn't recognize him. And he can't read, so Balram tells him that it's a picture of a driver who caught two terrorists. Balram spends a little more time talking about how he rented some cars first and then started calling up the call centers trying to get a contract as the taxi service for their employees. They all say that they already have taxi service, and that's when he gets the idea to bribe the police. But he only has to give the police a little more than 10,000 rupees. However, he does talk about how he's continuously paying them after that. The movie quickly shows Balram eyeing a girl in a hotel, but the book explains this. He says that he doesn't go to the red light districts anymore because he doesn't think it's right to buy and sell women who live in cages and get treated like animals. So now he only buys women that he finds in five-star hotels. The rest is pretty much the same, but Balram never meets the prime minister in person. So there's a lot going on in this book, and most of it is really sad stuff presented in a darkly humorous way. One thing I thought was interesting about the adaptation is that Priyanka Chopra Jonas was one of the movie's producers, and it seems like that might have had some influence in the changes to the character that she played. Pinky has a more powerful presence in the movie, and she's aggressive, speaking her mind and standing up for herself all the time. 
very different from the book, where she's just a really unlikable character. But the book is entirely from Balram's perspective, and we can see that he puts very little value on women. Early on, when he's talking about the women in his own family, he says that the men all work, and when they come home, the women literally fight them to take their money. Later, after Pinky leaves, he tells Ashok that it never occurred to him that a wife would leave her husband. I believe these are ways that the author is highlighting the differences in this culture. Overall, it's a great adaptation, it stays pretty close to the source material, and I read that they used nearly an all-Indian crew, which helped make the film more authentic. I don't have any experience with India personally, so I'm not sure how authentic this movie is, but I'd love to know what you think if you do have personal experience. Please let me know. Well, there you have it. That's my recap on The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga and the 2021 Netflix movie adaptation. I've included links to both the book and the movie in the description below, so you can check them out for yourselves. If you enjoyed this review, please click like, and be sure to click subscribe to see my next video. Thanks for watching.